Paul McCartney got in touch and said that he, he was working on a book um, on Linda McCartney, his former wife, who was a great photographer. And in going through the archive, he found a thousand photographs that he'd taken, which he thought had all been lost, of the early days of the Beatles. And he basically said, like, would you like to have a look? And do you think this could be interesting? Like, yes. So the photographs um, in the exhibition cover just a three-month period. So from November 1963 through to February 1964, which, although that seems like a very short period of time, everything changes for the Beatles. And, you know, people have also talked about how everything changes sort of culturally. So we have the kind of British scene uh, and the photographs really reflect that kind of post-war period in Britain. Uh, then they go to Paris and the photographs taken in Paris where they're doing a residency at the Olympia Theatre are quite different. They're on the street. Some of them are quite tourist photographs of sort of Parisian street scenes, but also photographs of the other Beatles kind of hanging out and they look really moody and cool. And then the photographs, they uh, show them going to America, and that's when they performed on the Ed Sullivan Show to an audience of 73 million people, which was an unprecedented TV audience. Uh, and sort of after that moment, everything changes, and the photographs kind of show the sort of joy and kind of extraordinary reaction that people had to the Beatles when they went to America. Yeah, they are um, particularly the ones where they're arriving or departing from an airport where there's thousands of people, you know, 7,000 people waited for them at Miami Airport when they arrived. Um, and yeah, it's, it's insane. And actually, the more you look at those photographs, the more details that you see uh, of how crazy it was. There's um, a woman carrying a chimpanzee. Uh, and then people sort of almost falling off the balcony. But this is what Paul McCartney was taking when he's standing at the top of the steps as they kind of descend from an aeroplane. He is taking pictures to record them as memories, but also because he's sort of taking pictures emulating the kind of f photography that he was seeing in newspapers and magazines at the time. So there's a sort of a real combination between a snapshot, but then ones that you can see where he's trying to take a proper photograph. His photographs are really great, and I think he does have a really excellent visual sense um, and, really, and a photographer's eye. Um, he's the first person who will say he's not a professional photographer, uh, but that he was really interested in photography.
he's been, you know, sort of going with us in this exhibition every step of the way. So every print that we had made, um, we would show him sort of the sizes that we were thinking of, the kind of quality that we were looking at, the t sort of paper choices and the framing. So he s knew what to expect, but when we actually installed and he came to see the sort of stages of the installation, he would come in and he would spend a very long time looking at every photograph, you know, reading the captions, pointing things out, making suggestions. So, yeah, it was, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's his, very much his exhibition.